When I was 14 years old, I had a dream of my death, of my burial, actually. And I remember during that time, there were, like, guys in that grave, walikuwa wanasema tuzike na ulu mse. There were, like, a million people. And then a, a voice told me, you must make sure that your burial looks like that. So I'm 14 years old. So, I, you know, I, I forgot about it. And then now, as now I started understanding myself and understanding my purpose, I came to actually learn that my purpose on this earth is to bridge people to where they are going. So once I learned that, now being a music producer becomes a vehicle that I use to work my purpose. Growing up was weird and funny at the same time because um, I had different, you know, different experiences. You know, when I was in Nairobi, I had a totally different experience. When now I was in coast, I was also on a totally different experience. Like I remember, because um, my aunt brought me up, you know, when, when I was, let's say from six to 14 there. So my cousins, me and my cousins, we, we were in this crew of like 12 kids and we used to go out and steal. We could st pickpocketing, yani mimi nilikuwa pick. I remember my first stunt, niliba so. I was in class six. I think I was the happiest person alive. So we used to steal money from people and then to the meet and then we see how much we've gotten. When you have a pull your stand, you don't have a mink. You don't have a fair home. But I remember during that time, at a sick one, you have a chocho. So it was. It was very, very interesting. And also, the other challenge that I had was, I, you know, it's very challenging for a kid growing up as an adult in terms of where the mind is. But how he is, he's too, he's be, before, any kayaki. So that was the challenge also my parents had. Because hayuko normal. So, mpeleke kwa auntie. So now when I was there, um, it's weird, but I started smoking cigarettes when I was three years old. That was the first time I actually made cigarettes from popo leaves and, and mfuko ya bandari ya, ya, unga ya, ya ugali. You know, the first time I started smoking weed, I was 12 years old. And, and, and the biggest challenge I had was because I had not been accepted when I was a kid, so I pushed myself to be accepted by people. So if it's, this, the, if it's about education, I had to be the smartest kid in that school. If kama ni urui, lazima mimi ni kwerui yule number one kabisa, yani, you get. To God be the glory and honor. Kwa hali zote mungu wangu yu ahona. See, I've been through this and that January to December. Mungine ana omba ani rudi shebak. Skiza power kama when you listen up. To God be the glory, cause 
Most of the cases I did when I was in school, I didn't call anyone, even my mom. Like my parents didn't know the type of kid they had because at home I was very, very silent. But at school, I used to command, like Niki Sema Leo Tuna Chapawa to Tuna Chapawa say. Sema sometimes we could even skive school for just skiving. Or maybe I remember there's a time there's something called Upupu uh, in coast. It's like a thing uki uki iki kupata kwa body una chikuna mbaya sana. So there's a time we didn't want to go to school and we just put it in the morning in class. Especially the, the students we didn't like, just put all of that there. And when they came, like, Walivu Like, I wasn't a good kid, but I was smart. And I thank God because that had rescued me a lot. Because there's a time, there's a strike we had in school, and Tukakataku Chapwa, and I was like, you know what? Walimu Wakwende Uko, you know. and that time there were officials who were shule wa mekam kucheki how the school was progressing. I went, told them what had happened. They wrote, wrote a letter, gave it to me, and then now I called my friends like, yo, these teachers can't tell us anything. Now I'm 13 years old. So I went with the letter, nikampatia headmaster, nikambua, you've been told, you've been instructed to let us go to class. Then the, the headmaster that time, he was shocked. He was like, what? Yani unataka kufuta kazi walimu? So there was a teacher's meeting, and then now, if you are the rudest student, unafkuzwa. If you never used to do your homework, unafkuzwa. If you are the noisemaker hapo, yani sana, unafkuzwa. Like, 13 kids were expelled from school. And, you know, later as I grew up, I, that's a guilt that I actually carried it. And also when I was in secondary school, 11 kids were, are they 11 or 12? 12 kids also were expelled through a strike that I led also. And for a very long time, Nikitwe Nyemeni, the reason why I have passion, especially for young people, it's to always share my experience with them. So I, I use that as my Yani Nikama Kuji heal, because now I'm, I'm pushing to inspire a lot of kids because. I just grew up broken. That's what I can say. I always grew up rejected. Like, I remember when I was, I, when I, I stayed with my aunt. You know, my aunt was called Menyoka, and Menyoka was married to a Muslim. And because at that environment, I couldn't operate as a Christian, because at that environment, I couldn't operate as a Christian. Because one, uh, during Ramadhani, akuna kitu, yeni unapata. You can't eat with them. So I really, really wanted to become part of this family, but I couldn't. So unachawasewa nakula, then we went una, una manga later. So it made me now become a who? A Muslim. At least me is your body. So now I started having an experience of, oh, kama nikula, you know, we tunakula pamoja. But then immediately I became a Muslim. Now from my family, because they are who? <laughs> they are Christians, and they are Christ like not Christians as a family, but they are Christians, like staunch Christians. You get like church our easy course. Yani like my like you know because we are extended family. My grandmom ukimwambia bwana asifiwe anakuuliza bwana mugani jupi a mimi ni kona e you know. So now this side nika nika katwa. I was cut off from the family. Now I couldn't come because I'm a Muslim. So, uku, I'm not a real Muslim. Uku, ata usiwa ikanyaga. Like, I remember I was in, there's a time I was in class six and I came home. I don't know what, what I came to do. And 
um, so I can't even talk with my other cousins and my bros and, and my uncles and grand, grandparents there. And dogs themselves, yani nimeka hivi, madogi walikuwa nanifukuza. They didn't want to see me. Like I remember kuna time flani kuku ilikame, it touched me like this. Ilish kwa nikambe, imekatwa shingo. Like, like I was like, wow. Yani, this rejection is so weird. So I left. I started now, I was 12, so I started now working. Tzedha ni jenge nyumba ya matope, ni get do, ni nunu nguo, you know. And during the Ramadan, siyezi bayu nguo, jiu, I'm not from that place. I remember there's a time my cousin, my cousins were laughing at me because I was, so uh, Eid, it's like tomorrow. And then they, they have been manguo, amenunuliwa, you know. And then just Mimi, I'm not from that place. So I was having a dream, but nilikuwa naongea kwa hiyo dream, Niki beg my cousin, ambie babake, and nilunuli ya Christmas, ya iyo Eid. And then now they were laughing at me because, you know, that would never have happened. So, and then my, my aunt was a tailor. So most of the times, uh, akiwana nguo mob, akiambia wale watoi wake, now the kids that were there, they were not even helping. So me nilikuwa na fanya nini? I used to help her, you know, and nilikuwa na shona dresses. <laughs> I remember now when I, when I was 14, I made it because life was weird. Because now, sikuwa nangoya skuku, sikuwa nangoya. Like, I started buying myself clothes and it was really, really, really hard for me now to start surviving. Because I was wondering, like, mbona mini teseke apa? Yeah, there was food, there was everything, but mbona nikae apa? Now, okay, actually at that time I started having issues about my identity as an as a Muslim or a Christian. So I was really, really struggling with that. And I told God one thing. I made, because now I started seeing things. I started having visions. I started knowing things. And then um, I told God, I'm going to do my, my exam. I did two. I did IRE and I did CRE. CRE, I hadn't done it for like four or five years. So I told God, okay, I'm doing IRE and I'm going to do CRE at the same time. Yenye nitapita, iyo ndo nitakuwa. So nikapita siyari. So I just left, I said I don't care, I know I, najua homa wata nikubali, but I will go all the same. So I went back home, na nikaka hapo. It was hard, because you are still a Muslim. You are still rejected, but I didn't care. I was like, yes. And then also the, the issue of now going back to school, and everyone knew that I was doing IRE, and then also changing that. I remember kids, uh, when during CRE, ki, uh, wa Islamu wana toko wa kenda kwa darasa lingine, mini kaka. And then guys are looking at me like, you're not supposed to go, no, 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 no. I, I said, I am, I am safe. I am okay here. So now it was from that time now I started learning, not actually learning, studying. When, when you call yourself a Christian, what does that mean? Now you see, I'm young, I'm 14 years old. So now I started learning, 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 until now I felt like, you know, these Christians can't tell me anything. I'm also part of who you are. But also, you know, that with that experience also, it made me become a, a loner. Because I never used to share my issues, I used to fight my own issues, because I know if I say, um, this and then also another thing, I was too light. Nilikuwa shule nilikuwa naitwa kazungu do. Like do means you are si unajua embe dodo. So like I was nilikuwa ka yellow. So yani maze nilikuwa na enjoy wa na shanga. Wa. So is it bad to be cuz nilikuwa na kamzu. Yani mishida tu 
mechakwa na shida mpaka unakuwa black but it used to really really hurt me being yani nilikuwa nikiambwa kazungu do na sikia vibaya yani i'm like wow i wish i was born dark i wish i wish singe kwa light skin kama hivi i wish ninge kwa black basi maybe i would have i would have been normal like like them So with that then I go to secondary school. Secondary school was a little bit easy because now it means now you are fitting yourself into a into a different environment and you know you are not home anymore. So that pressure of oh you are muslim or it, it it didn't but also another challenge I had the experience especially I had with secondary school it's that I wasn't really really okay with you know with my dad and there was no chance that I would go to college so even that one really messed me up because because of that fivefold ministry of a man you know you go to good school and then you go to college so secondary school me honestly sikusoma kwa sababu i already knew the, pre the 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 present reality that i lived with was that i could not afford to go to college mishale wana rusha na vita wana tupiga i'm too easy we are more than a conqueror see to show coca and I didn't grow up as a kid. I grew up already voicing opinions. Mainly grow up nikitaka kukuwa huyo mtu mkubwa. You know, I think one thing there's a time yani nilikuwa na na shanga why I used to draw myself huku kwa hizo mandevu. Like why yani mazee yani Eh 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 yani mazee ninge kwa mkubwa au madem venye ninge wa nini like <laughs> like I, I i used to look at it from a point of view of just because i'm a kid wow madem hawa he wangejua mimi nani so nilikuwa napenda ku experience vitu za mature things so unapata sometimes i never used to sleep at at home nilikuwa niko club at my young at my young age so my mom is like wow huyu mtoto atanishinda so my auntie now Menyoka used to be yes, she was a chick but she was like a guy because I was told when um, my grandma was pregnant you know people would know uyo ni demdo takuwa naye so she, the the ladies told her she was going to have a boy and then mtoto demdo akazaliwa so amekuwa tu na huo uchali like she is the ukiambiwa una Menyoka anakuja kukuchapa yani unajua hiyo itakuwa kichapo proper the, the thing that keeps me pushing every time is that as I'm trying to push to build my influence as a music producer I'm still working on my purpose because there are young people that I've been able to meet I've been able to work with you know artists who are very who are also very influential and then now through that i'm able to um garner their influence in my world and try to also influence other young other young people so that is what keeps me going not just as a music producer but just as a person <laughs> Every day I wake up in the morning I'm like so who should I bridge is it myself is it so and so so that that's how my life is and also for so many artists that I've worked with they know kwa saint ni 80% stories 20% recording me being being in this life I know my I know my purpose that's why I'm not afraid to work with anybody because I know my purpose. I'm called to bridge people. I'm here for you.
My take on the music industry is interesting. Uh, I would say though, like, it's interesting that, you know, during, during those days when we grew up, there were only few people. You could name few talented people. You know, you could name Nameless Wahoo, you know, Avril there. You could name very few people, Abbas and, but nowadays, you know, there's this new generation of artists that, one, they're all talented and through their talent, they are able to morph themselves into the sound of now. So I will say, in terms of talent growth, we are really, really good. Now, the only challenge we have is that we don't have, because it's a, it's, it's a promising industry, but it's not, it's not successful yet. So we don't have blueprints that like, like kama US una, una skia, msia, nasema, kuwaka Beyonce. I want to be like Beyonce. And the dad is confident about that because one, anajua how worth, you know, how net worth ya Beyonce ni ngapi. So he's like, yeah, I think now music is successful. What I know is Kenya is the only country. Like I, 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 I tell this to people. If Diamond came to launch his album here, what does he know that we don't know as local artists from this place? Kenya is the only country that supports other, other people from outside. But it's only that the policies are bad and also the people that, that are holding, it's like the way we are all blind. I love to not to a president way to now come say an hour at a tree beer. The people who are there, we need to put people who are one, they are musicians and they understand what we are going through. So that's the only thing. Like, I won't lie to you, I can't survive with music alone. We can't survive, not unless you give your life a lot. So that's the only challenge. Until now, the industry grow to a point whereby if I produce a song, and is a producer 100,000, then we will know it's true. The industry has grown. Nikki roll na Bugatti. I'm still Giuliani, Nikki va party party. I'm still Giuliani, Buddha, masterpiece. Lakini Nikki lose Christ, na Nikki ori dis tule na I think because we come from a point of growth. And I always, the way I've always pushed to build myself as a person is that your highest point is your lowest point. So any achievement that you have, that's going to be your lowest point from where you are. And that has helped me actually to, act to, to evolve and, and grow. But I will say, the biggest achievement, like the, the day when I felt like, yo, I've made it was the first time when, because now I come from all this rejection and stuff. So the first time I remember, I got interviewed by Monaisha Chizuga on KTN at seven. And everyone in my village saw that interview because people were called. I think that one was, and now the people who thought I was crazy, because kuna wase wengine walikuwa najua, hey, uu mtoto, uu mtoto tu ni wazimu, ni, ni kumpele kahosi tu ndo bado, but ame cheesy, you get. And then they were like, wow. So, iu jinga yote enye likuwa kwa nafanya hapa, kumbe you were supposed to become this. And even more now, working especially with my bro, Jay Blessing, because... You know, he also had his own life and he grew up the way he grew up. And now he, he's at a point whereby he has influence in terms of his art. So, and also me doing, um, you know, music. So the biggest ach achievement for us is that, okay, so bro, why can't we connect these two things together to form something huge? So we started a company called LS Universal, whereby 
you know, we write music and record music and shoot the videos and, and stuff. So I think that's one of the, for me, I'll, I'll say that's one of the biggest family achievement because I come from a family whereby no one has ever succeeded in terms of business. Certified, verified, qualified. Since the same we are a It's a tool that we call up. Different combination of a star out. Africa love you, you know what it is. Know who you are. When you know who you are, then you're not doing everything out of the blue. You are doing everything consciously. And because when you know who you are, you are also aware of what you're supposed to do. Because most of us, we are driven by, um, we are driven by opinions, so many opinions out there. So once you know who you are, it doesn't matter what comes to you, whether it's rejection, whether it's confusion, whether it's lack of something. As long as you know who you are and you're working on your purpose, because when you know who you are, it allows you to understand your purpose on this earth. I can talk to guys. This is the book we'll be reviewing, Linen by Sheryl Sandberg. The advice that she gives is advice that I don't think is necessarily applicable to every woman. Women are always looking for answers somewhere. The girls have received the message, yeah. but somewhere along the way, I think we assumed that the boys were fine.